Hello, my name is Ian Dean. Welcome to another Mesh Baker tutorial video. In this video, we're going to look at the clustering tools that have been added to Mesh Baker. So uh, let's look at this scene. You can see there's a lot of asteroids in it. Um, I think 2,000 to be exact. Uh, in our camera, we have 1,120 draw calls, which is fairly heavy even for a PC. So it would be nice if we could group these asteroids together into some combined meshes. So Mesh Baker is great at that. Uh, let's create a um, uh, mesh and material baker. Actually, let's create a multi-mesh and material baker object first and show you what happens. Okay, so there's a texture baker, open tools for adding objects. Let's uh, list shaders in scene. This will run a report. It takes a little bit because uh, there's so many objects. And what it's doing is it's analyzing uh, all the mesh renders in the scene. There it's done. Window console. Uh, copy this. Uh, clear it. And then let's bring up a report here. Save no. Paste that in. So let's take a look here. Um, we have 546,000 vertices uh, in those asteroids. So um, even if we combine those into meshes, that's still going to be uh, like 10 of the maximum sized meshes that, that Unity can handle. That's even still pretty heavy. So I just created a multi-mesh baker. I could select my asteroid field, add selected meshes, and it would add all of these meshes to this mesh baker, and then I could create the atlas and bake it. However, what, it's gonna, what would happen is I would end up with several meshes with all the asteroids splattered everywhere throughout that mesh or through, uh, distributed across those 10 meshes and that's not necessarily ideal because if I select the camera where's my camera you can see the camera frustrum in this view a lot of these asteroids are not going to be visible all the time probably less than half of them so it would be nice if those could be culled what we'd like to do is group the meshes that are close together and that's what the clustering tools do so let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to delete this and just go back to an ordinary mesh baker object. You might notice something a little different if you're a long time user that um, I've separated the Atlas creation part, which is, uh, let's get rid of the console and close this window for now, um, the MB3 texture baker component. And and I've separated that from the mesh baker component. So those are actually the mesh baker components are children of the texture baker component, and that's so that we can have many mesh bakers sharing the same texture baker. And we've also added this new component, the MB3 mesh baker grouper component. So the first thing I'm going to do is add uh, the mesh baker grouper is the component that's going to cluster all of our asteroids. So the first thing I'm going to do is add these asteroids. So the easiest way to do that is open tools for adding. I select my asteroid field. I click add selected meshes. And it crawls through all the objects in the asteroid field, adding those to this texture baker. It takes a little while because there's 2,000 of them. A little while being a few more seconds, I think. Should be done any second now. There we go. So if we go back to our material baker, open tool uh, and look in objects to be combined it's now got 2,000 objects in there so then we create empty assets for materials let's just put these in experiments combined asteroid as asset yes so it creates a material for us and that and then we ready to bake so bake materials into combined material uh, again, this will take a little bit because it has to find all the renderers. There, it's starting to, oh, it's collecting the textures. All right, we're back. So I've just finished creating the Alice. That took probably about a minute and a half. Um, so now we're going to look at these clustering features. So 
uh, we've got this new component, the Mesh Baker Grouper component. We can pick the cluster type. Currently there are two types. I intend to add a third type, which is Varuni. Um, the first two types are grid, which will divide everything up onto a grid, and the second type is pi. So let's take gr grid. Um, origin at 0, 0, 0. We'll probably want to change that. I'll get to that in a minute. Cell size. Well, this asteroid field goes from positive 5,000 to negative 5,000. So I'm going to set the cell size to, we could try 1,000. 1,000. 1,000. And you'll see that a box, a grid of boxes has shown up showing what those cells will look like. So I can zoom in. You know, there's not very many asteroids in each of those cells, so I think I should go bigger. Uh, let's go 2,500. That's 25,000, that's too big. 2,500, 2,500. Um, okay. And oops, if I select there. So that's looking a little better. Yeah, there's a good chunk of asteroids. Now notice there's two layers. So if we look at our view from the side, you can see the problem is the clusters are splitting along the bottom. So let's move the origin down 500, half a cluster there. So now the clusters are, um, yeah, the asteroids not thick. So we can actually make it this just a thousand units thick. There. So the, as the, the asteroids are now nicely centered and you can see the clusters that it looks like it will create. Now it looks like there's a few asteroids that actually snuck out the edge. So I'm going to make these clusters just a hair bigger. So let's do, you know, 2600 in each direction just to make it slightly more efficient. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so now what I do is I delete the existing mesh baker. Delete, I collect my material baker and I click the generate mesh bakers. So what happened here is where we had one mesh baker before, now there's one mesh baker for every cluster and then I can say click bake all child mesh bakers. So I click that, that's done. Then I can click disable renderers on child mesh bakers. So this goes through all the objects that have been added to these mesh bakers and disables the renderers on the source objects. And then you'll see we've got all these combined meshes. And hopefully you can see the way they're lighting up. So there's one mesh for each cluster. And then if we go back to here, instead of 1,000 120 draw calls. We're now down to 25 draw calls. And the cool thing is, is uh, if I select my camera, you can see, where's my camera, uh, main camera? Um, you can see that meshes up here in this area, I'm having trouble selecting it, like that mesh is going to be culled because it's outside the camera frustrum. So it won't get included in the um, the combined, or it won't get it won't get drawn. So all those vertices are going to get get culled. So this is obviously a much more efficient uh, setup than having um, the the asteroids randomly assigned to a bunch of combined meshes, and all those combined meshes having to be rendered in every draw call. Now there's another option, um, which I'll go over for combining. So let's delete these combined meshes. Delete and uh, I'll show enable the renderers. So we got the renderers back. Instead of the grid we could use do a pie. So this works uh, in situations where the player can't move but can rotate and look around. And so um, we would want to center the pie on the camera so we could set the origin to wherever the camera is. Let's set it back up to zero. So where is my camera? Um, it's at 2000. Let's just copy and paste these. Okay. Uh, that was a negative. 
and where's my camera main camera actually a neat trick is you can just drag the mesh baker so it's a child zero the position and then drag it back out and it will magically have the um, the values that we wanted. So now the mesh baker is centered on the camera. Then um, you can orient the axis of the of this about which this pi exists uh, in any direction by editing these values. Uh, and you can set the number of segments. So by default it's four, but let's do eight. And then I. Um, open this up and I delete the other mesh bakers that are still there. I select it again. I go generate mesh bakers. So now there's mesh bakers there. I can bake all child mesh bakers. They just got baked. And if we look at this again, and let's disable all the renderers in the source objects. Then you can see how the scene has been baked into these pie shapes. So this, um, you know, obviously this depend as the player rotates, he'll just be seeing a few of these pies. So if I, uh, so there's the camera. So we obviously only need the um, the meshes that are in front of the camera, and all the ones that are behind the camera are going to be culled. So there'll be a lot fewer vertices. If we look at the game view, it still says 24 draw calls, which I'm surprised it's that high, but uh, I guess that's what it is. Um, uh, you know, a lot of the calls are probably from these other objects that are in the scene. Anyway, that shows you uh, how the new MeshBaker components work. Uh, MeshBaker is available in the Unity Asset Store. If you have any questions, you can contact me in the forums. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for the your time.